M- Michigan. Michigan. Electrician. Electrician. Detroit. Detroit. Division. Division. Position. Position. Michelle. Michelle. Marissa. Marissa. Delivery. Delivery. Stop. Пусть остаток слов именно как бы э, читает, то есть и потом уже читает из памяти, то есть пересказывает. Can you retell the words, not read them from the list, but list, but read it in your mind and then say it, not looking at them. Looking at them. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Retell. Retell. Security. Security. Вот сложнее уже, ага. Guitar. Guitar. P- position. Position. The name. The name. N- 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 Michelle. Michelle. Uh, there's a town by me town called Nesconset. Nesconset. Uh, I always uh, wanted to I visit, wanted to visit S- 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 Sedona, Sedona, Arizona. Arizona. Uh, uh, Detroit, Detroit is a city in, a city in M- Michigan. Michigan. I've had issues I've had trying issues to say Alexander's, to say Alexander's last, name. last name. I think oh. it's... I think it's the Galovich. Galovich. It's uh, the stress uh, is the on, the, on the the last but one, last but one syllable. syllable. On the third, the third syllable. The Galovich. No, no, Vash Family. Vash Family. Vash Family. Vash the word, the word communication. communication. Uh, delivery. Delivery. Electrician. Electrician. Mm-hmm. Так, пусть расскажет о своей проблеме и где это чаще всего происходит, его заикание. Mm-hmm. Может быть, отдельные слова, если бы звуки, пусть okay. еще раз об этом расскажет. So, Alex asks you to tell again in short about your problem and uh, maybe where it usually happens and... Uh, to tell those examples that you told me before with the special words and sounds. Okay, all right. Um, Well, the overall problem is since I was 18, I started having speech problems, uh, more with anxiety, nervousness. Uh, I started in school. And uh, it was just for reading at first, and then it started with phone calls and then talking with people. And I'm known to be a pretty talkative person, but other times I get I get very nervous, very blocked on words. I tend to have problems with maybe words that start quickly, um, so words that have a first syllable that's quick. It's not only that, but that's one of the main ones that's always in my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also with different si- si- situations, um, sometimes make me nervous and certain people i guess i can be relaxed with my friends but i will avoid words a lot uh, i'm sure alex probably might know about that as well um, 
and some some therapists uh, they call it closet stutters where they're kind of hiding their stutter if that makes sense yeah. and that's probably what I am mm -hmm. usually Брайан, расскажите о вашем вчерашнем походе. С кем общались? С психологом, да? И как все прошло, с вашей точки зрения? I thought it was okay. I'm usually pretty relaxed, except the certain word that I either have to hesitate on or mm -hmm. smooth out that first um, syllable. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe 80%. percent <laughs> uh, I heard that it was okay. Ну, учился правильно анализировать ошибки. Их исправлять тоже делал это. Каждую ошибку исправлял. Кажется, нет. В преступном состоянии. Вот, то есть это называется, как бы он как будто бы в стену упирается, но он помнит, что если он пойдет по старому пути, то будет один. Вот. И вот в таких а, моментах он себе не позволял идти старым образом, там продавить, типа там, знаете, когда обычно зайти продавливают. Вот, именно продавить. Или он все-таки эти моменты оставлял, то есть он не позволял идти по старому пути. The question was, um, if you know that the uh, situation before you have the stupor in your speech, there is uh, some feeling like... Ну, повторяю, без продавления, знаете, да, что есть просто запинка, есть просто повторение, mm -hmm. либо там зависание там, а, 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 азбука, а есть когда ты давишь там, азбука, вот, то есть есть два типа. А первое – это то, с чего начинается заикание вообще, в принципе, в детстве, там, э, либо там «ма», не, стоп, «ма», 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 «мазар», да, а потом ты уже пытаешься это преодолеть, и ты делаешь «мазар», «мазар», ну, там по-разному делаешь вообще, вот. И сейчас главная э, тема первых дней – это приучить себя к тому, чтобы сдвинуть себя хотя бы на первый этап, на этапе вот более-менее безобидной повторения. И потом с этого этапа будет проще перешагнуть на этап вообще нормальной речи, зная, каким образом можно вырабатывать навык именно без повторного произношения слов. Mm -hmm. Фраз, предложение, да, собственно, потому что все слово строится. Mm -hmm. И такую okay. ступеньку надо понимать, это важные задачи. И чем он лучше для себя поймет, усвоит, тем он лучше потом у него будет получаться. Что это он не должен пытаться пробовать постоянно делать, это только перед сложным словом. И в голове понимаешь, что от этого он потом будет отходить. То есть это лишь начало для того, чтобы привести мысли в норму. 
а следовательно уже перевести речь в норму, да? Mm -hmm. То есть это не то, что мы ему даем, там он постоянно будет пользоваться, и если вдруг он где-то забудет, он будет заикаться, нет. То есть это путь а, по дороге к, собственно, нормальному осознанию, нормальному мышлению, нормальной речи. Lessons. Um, it seems like, uh, is he planning on writing a book? <laughs> Александр, вы планируете писать книгу? Попозже. Later? Maybe a, a little one? Good, yeah. Because it seems like he wrote it very thoroughly, as if it would be a chapter in a book, especially those last pages that had a lot of the thorough information. Последние страницы нашей памятки очень глубокие и как раз похожи на главу книги. Так, а он еще с кем общался, помимо того, что с психологом? Психологом, с папой. Ну, после нашего. С папой. Have you had... More conversations, except your therapist and father. Um, a few quick ones. I had to go to the clothing store, um, so of course I spoke uh, with the customer service um, lady there uh, for about six or seven minutes. Uh, and I'm usually pretty friendly when I'm out. I can try and be, as you know, maybe a little talkative, a little friendly when I'm at a store or mm -hmm. something. Of course, it depends on the day. Sometimes I might feel a little anxious on certain days, um, but if I'm at the at the market, I've had a little bit more of a, a feeling lately of being a little more relaxed when I can just be friendly to a stranger. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then I notice when I'm doing that, I'm not thinking as much, so it's a little bit more of a natural friendliness where you're not think you're not your brain is not getting in the way or my brain isn't getting in the way as much mm -hmm. that makes sense yes в магазине одежды с консультантом общался и там чувствовал себя достаточно свободно потому что был такая обстановка дружелюбная ну, консультанты не всегда такие дружелюбные. Поэтому не было особых проблем. Он каждую ошибку старался исправить. Да. Пойдет страх, но тут надо не сначала то, что мы ему уже говорили, страх отодвигать, пытаться на второе место, на второй план. А, надо делать правильные действия для того, чтобы страх как следствие уже убирался сам. Угу. За секунду есть проступорное состояние, но смотрите, главное, чтобы он все-таки знал, что с ним делать, потому что будет. И у меня был, можете сказать, что первый месяц у меня таких преступных состояний был, наверное, несмотря на то, что я был у Снежко и отдал ему большую сумму, то у меня таких состояний было как минимум 200-300, когда я боялся и когда mm -hmm. я останавливался и знал, что если я продолжу без нормальной мыслительной работы, которая мне поможет понять, как можно по новому пути, то я снова буду ступорить. Mm -hmm. Вот так вот все было. Просто? Да, потому что он раньше думал, как пишется for guard T, то есть именно там F, это O, это G, как бы, да? Mm -hmm. <laughs> это G, G по-русски. А тут уже просто как бы ты понимаешь, к чему надо тебя готовиться в первую очередь, как делается звук. И это mm -hmm. ближе для того, чтобы, например, это как идти против дракона, можно с пистолетом, а можно с гранатометом, то есть, ну, это более эффективное оружие, можно вот так объяснить. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like a... <clears throat> if you can tell me about your um, well, plans for the day, I guess, or how you, how is your mood today? Um... Whoops, that was a mistake. Это ошибка первого уровня, то есть можно, то есть если э, но это не ступор, да? То есть потом, смотрите, после прохождения первого уровня будет второй уровень более сложный. Там уже это будет ошибкой. Разгонкой. In the lightest version you right. can do that, but in the harder mm, 
different level, mm -hmm. as you call it. Mm -hmm. There you shouldn't do it. But it's good that you see it. Yeah, I know sometimes people say that uh, to think. Mm -hmm. um, they might be searching for a thought and they might say, uh, or, Yes, um, that's for, for this um, situation, I think it's fine. Yes. So you asked, uh, how, well, how was I feeling today? Yes. Um, this morning, I had a cup of coffee and I started feeling a little anxious the first half hour that we started this conversation. Um, now I feel a little bit better. So mm -hmm. I eventually was going to ask Alex if he feels that I should avoid coffee <laughs> because I don't know if it makes you more, more anxious uh, or not. I uh, think, but, well, coffee is usually half and half. Some people say that it has a lot of advantages even for the health, but mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the type of the coffee and the amount, well, how much you drink, because mm -hmm. Americans have cups like this, oh, but oh. it should be only like... Yeah, I just, yeah, I had just a small little... <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, it wasn't well, that bad. Probably you should pay attention to your feelings after you have this cup. Yes. So what do you feel? Yes, it, it helps me wake up and um, I woke up at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. It helped me get a little energy for our long session. Um, okay. But now I feel um, better. I don't feel anxious uh, or, or um, uh, riled up with too much energy. I feel better now. So the coffee may have worn off. Maybe. Uh, yes. Maybe, yes. I heard that coffee doesn't give us energy. It just takes more from us. But then it comes down without the energy that we gave, like in advance, you know. Yeah, sometimes people call that a crash. You might be up here and then you'll just crash. It's like you have no with, with the sugar, right? Exactly. Yes. I was so, a little overwhelmed this morning, mm -hmm. um, I guess because of last night, trying to understand this. Maybe I was a little frustrated at times, but I understand this is new. Mm -hmm. uh, I get, I'm used to trying to learn everything quick and trying to impress people or impress you. <laughs> and and Alexander, you uh, are you. You think that is necessary? You um, should be just comfortable, you know. Yes, you are yes. expressing only you, impressing only yourself. Right, I'm trying right. to understand that instead of just pleasing everybody else. Trying to go at my own pace and um, uh, satisfy myself. Yes. So that's how I guess I'm feeling so far today. Good. That's it's still early. Should be. Right. I always believe that a good start for the day is very early because I woke up very late and that's that doesn't help me to get to you. Yeah. I, uh huh. It it um, makes you tired the whole day. Tired and uh, like broken in some way yeah sluggish sluggish interesting word um what <laughs> what is your um, favorite animal my favorite animals uh probably are cats i've always owned cats mm -hmm. and i've always been interested in the wild cats such as tigers mm -hmm. uh, cheetahs jaguars panthers yeah. And so I've always liked cats and I think having them as a pet, they're much easier to take care of than uh, a dog because <laughs> they just do their own thing. And yes, they, you don't need to go out with them. Right, right. And they go to the bathroom on their own and they cover it up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so right. I grew up with cats. So they're uh, my, my favorite pet. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, what is... Do you agree? <laughs> what? Do you agree? Or are you a dog person? Uh, I don't know. I don't... Oh, okay. I never had a cat or a dog, so... Oh, okay. I like all animals, but not in my house. 
Yep, that's how my sister is. Yeah, she loves the animals, but she doesn't want the fur or the oh, the smell. Yes. Or the next question I was I, I remembered. I I was interested. Do you have sisters or brothers? And how how big is your family? Uh, my immediate family, which is you know everybody that I'm mm -hmm. to, um, okay. uh, five. Um, my mother, father, my older sister, mm -hmm. and your sister. So mm -hmm. I'm the middle child and uh, the only boy, of course. Um, and unfortunately, my mother passed away six years ago of cancer. And mm -hmm. that has been obviously a very difficult thing for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very close with her. So I think a lot of the stress um, started manifesting in my speech also mm -hmm. if that makes mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. um so it was very strange when i was forced to take care of her and be her main person um at the hospital my speech wasn't as much of a problem which was strange and but i was stressed and it seemed like because i had to be thinking of what was happening to her and speaking with the doctors about important things, my speech didn't seem to be the focus. Um, so that was interesting at a very tough time that was stressful, but my speech was not that much of a problem. And then after everything happened and after she passed, um, I don't know, I guess I thought I would use that confidence and that better speech and move forward in my life. And then it seemed like I just crashed again, and I went back down to how I was in the mm -hmm. past speech. So, and yes, I have an older sister. I'm a little close with her, but we've had some family issues ever since my mom passed. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to see her on our Thanksgiving holiday. And my younger sister had a baby recently, so I am an uncle. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, he's five months old, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, but I'm yeah. trying to focus on myself with all of this and everything else that I feel, again, I should be with them and with my sisters a lot and the baby. I just haven't had a chance to because I think a lot of my energy has been trying to focus on myself and my own life and my speech, of course. Mm -hmm. So this course. is one step. Yes, the balance is always very important, you know, the balance yes. between you, family, work, everything. Mm -hmm. Another question is very deep, but if you want, I would be interested to hear what is happiness in your um, life? How do you understand it? And uh, how do you think can every person on the planet can be happy? Uh, happiness in my life, I don't have much happiness lately. Mm -hmm. That's why I've been depressed. And um, it seems like I've been surrounded about, by a lot of negative things or negative people. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to find that happiness again. Um, and obviously trying to improve on myself and on my speech is one step towards that. Um, and it's nice meeting other people as well, um, especially you and Alexander. It's just interesting to meet other people. So when I can be outgoing and friendly, that makes me happy. Uh, when I, um, I guess happiness is more about uh, doing what you love or doing, living the life that you know you want to live, not that you're forced to live. Yes. If that makes sense. I agree, to totally agree. To he looks like a very calm, not very calm person, but uh, yeah, not a person who wants to get in a fight. Exactly. <laughs> Just yeah, he, fight he doesn't look like a confrontational person. Right. That's, yeah, that's probably uh, a good word. Yeah. yeah. Alexander, would you? Ни с кем не подрались, но был вопрос от Брайана. 
Нет. Нет, вы не тот человек, который будет, как называется, человек. Не всегда Здравия. зависит от многих ситуаций. Uh -huh. It depends on the situation, says Alexander. Uh -huh. yeah. so. I'm the same way. Yeah, I'm a pretty normal, uh, calm person, but then if something happens, I, I can go right up to here <laughs> and, and get angry. Um, uh -huh. But I, don't, I, I never am aggressive with people, unless they're aggressive with me, but that's rare. <laughs> okay. Uh... So you can choose yourself what to tell about, or I can ask you either way. Just um. Well, did you say you wanted me to read something, or no, you, no, no, to say to speak about something? Okay. Um. Well, there I go again with the um. <laughs> uh, if you feel like uh, maybe asking me something, do you have any other questions listed? I do have a lot. Well, <laughs> yeah, already. Interesting. Or you can say maybe more like well, more I'll... like real real life situations describing something. Mm -hmm. um, well, the one thing I was going to say is mm -hmm. sometimes I'm frustrated with the way of life, um, either the way I've been living or just in my country. So sometimes I've wanted to experience other countries or other cultures, especially like we've talked that other countries can sometimes be very happy people and yeah. they have a different way of life. Mm -hmm. So I actually wanted to either travel or move to another country for a short time, but I never had any uh, way of doing that because I wasn't in school. So I didn't have like a, maybe like a foreign exchange program, I think they usually call it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you mentioned you did, I thought that was interesting. It must have been a great opportunity. Uh, to yes, it was. Do that. Yeah. Uh, was, it, was it scary at first, making such a big jump? A little bit, but I was too young. So <laughs> I don't, maybe I didn't even realize how big it is. Only now I can realize that, well, I went to another country over the ocean when I was 19 and I was alone. But of course, there were more Russian people. For now, it's just an amazing experience. And back then, it was, I didn't realize it. Yeah, sometimes uh, I know I've been. In the past, I had a lot of issues in um, high school mm -hmm. at the end of my, my, my schooling. Uh, some of it was because of my speech. That's when things began. And um, it was very stressful. And I was young at the time, too, where I couldn't uh, process everything. Or sometimes I just, I just rolled with it. You know, I just uh, accepted the stress or the frustration and just didn't know what to do and i was young so i said you know this is what i'm supposed to do or or i gave up after a while um with everything because you didn't know what to do anymore you felt stuck um and even over the years as i've gotten older sometimes i have been positive about things then uh giving up about things and the speech sometimes wasn't the focus of the problem and other times it's it's always there it's always in the back of the mind mm -hmm. um, and it's something I've always tried to address on my own or I thought it would just pass on its own it wouldn't be there anymore um, maybe when you get more confident as you get older uh, but that ha I've heard of people saying that when they were younger they had a speech problem or they stuttered and then they outgrew it as they grew up they didn't have it uh with me it was the opposite i never grew up with it and for i guess a stressful situation it happened in high school and it's been an issue for about uh, about 20 years and i can't believe it mm -hmm. i should have i think i know now 
that when I was younger at the time, I should have addressed it. I should have admitted that I didn't feel comfortable um, or I didn't feel comfortable expressing myself. Um, so uh, right now speaking, I feel okay, a little calmer, and we're having just a simple, uh, calm conversation. Of course, as we've established in public, you have so much senses coming in, um, mm -hmm. the hearing and, and, and just the way that you feel certain things might make you nervous, well, might make me nervous. Um, so everyone, uh, every, everyone can become nervous. It's fine. Yeah, it just seems like other people or normal people, like they say, um, they can get nervous, but it doesn't somehow affect their speech apparatus. Uh, whereas with me or with other stutterers, somehow if they get nervous or anxious, it goes right to the speech apparatus mm -hmm. or it goes right to their mind and then yes. it comes out of the speech apparatus. Right. So I understand uh, a lot of things. It's just sometimes over the years you, uh, you try and you read and you learn and then nothing seems to uh, work. Uh, so that was sometimes, I know people that had a lot of problems, but they never did anything about them except for doing drugs <laughs> uh, to make themselves feel better. I never did that. I always wanted to learn and, and read why I feel like this. I wanted to get to the root of it. And uh, the speech, I think, is the big root of a lot of it. And to finally have a thoroughness that we've had this last couple of days, and even the last few months that I've learned a lot from the website, mm -hmm. uh, it seems like it's actually a pretty good step of getting to the root of things and not wasting any more time. Great. And the two other therapists, have you ever heard of a speech therapist in New York, uh, Martin Schwartz? Martin Schwartz? Uh, Martin and Martin. Schwartz, S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z. <laughs> um, he wrote a lot of books, mm -hmm. ones that I think started the airflow technique. Oh. You know, when you're supposed to blow out yes and ease into a word and i went to him once but it wasn't helpful and it was a lot of money and then years later How much? Sorry. Uh, it was How one day it was three thousand mm -hmm. for one three thousand for for one session with a group of other uh, students three thousand right three thousand no, $3,000 for, for one, one session. session with a group of about 10 stutterers. Wow, and how old? Yeah. Um, that was all day. And mm -hmm. then they had follow-up things where I was supposed to record myself mm -hmm. trying to use his technique. And then I was supposed to mail to him yeah. in the mail the uh, ca cassette. I was supposed to mail that, and then one of his students would uh, analyze it. And then, you know, that was a little bit before we had all the cell phones. That mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. that, you know when that was? That was when 9-11 happened. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. it, it was about two weeks after that happened. Awesome. So that was when I uh, saw him. And it wasn't a great experience, and I got frustrated. And then I called him about a month later asking for a little more advice or a little more training. And he said that I would have to pay him more money. And I said, I don't feel that. As right. usual. Yeah, exactly. As usual. <sighs> like, he didn't seem helpful. He didn't. And he was never a stutter in the first place. He was just a doctor. Um, and then years later, I went to one other a very nice woman. And she... Uh, taught the typical, I guess, stuttering techniques um, about easing into things, but was never as thorough as this, actually teaching 
the steps and the soaring yes. tone and the ring tones. But she was very nice, and I was able to uh, talk with her thoroughly. She was also maybe like a personal therapist, not mm -hmm. just for speech. Um, just like I'm talking with you now, just openly about things and the way you feel. So she mm -hmm. was uh, helpful in that way, too. But it wasn't just about speech um, either, even though she taught some therapy as well. Mm -hmm. to, but it That's didn't really seem very interesting. <laughs> Okay. So Интересные that... моменты про двух терапевтов, ну, логопедов, к которым он обращался. Mm -hmm. Один из них Мартин Шортс или Шортс. Mm -hmm. Типа основатель вот этой техники по выдуванию звуков mm -hmm. или что-то связанное с дыханием. У них, mm -hmm. по крайней мере, он ходил на сессию, которая... Это было, когда самолеты разбились. Угу. Тогда еще. В общем, она стоила 3000 долларов за один день полный с группой студентов. Угу. И они в общем, уж что-то рассказывали, практиковали, потом он записывал, но один записывал день, аудио. Да, один день. Вот тут у них я, пересп... деньги. я переспросила. Ну, может, кредитки, опять же. Uh -huh. Скорее всего, даже я переспросила еще 300 или 3000. Uh -huh. Ну и в итоге аудио записывают, они там анализируют как-то что-то. И потом uh -huh. спросил еще раз, можно ли как-то побольше информации чтобы через месяц, чтобы что-то еще улучшить. Ну и сказали, что приходите за новым курсом, платите опять. Ничего себе. Столько. А потом он ходил к женщине еще uh -huh. одной. Она больше как... Психолог слушала, но, может быть, что-то давала, но не настолько, естественно, глубокая, как э, в курсе. Потому что она психолог, она не заикалась сама. Ну да, но она как бы она может быть успокоиться, логопед. расслабиться, как бы все да. хорошо, но это не работает. Вот, У нас так. тоже такие есть да, в России. Конечно. Они все да. такие. А, вы у него можете спросить, например, а, знает ли он, что... А, кстати... Как пошло, то он без ошибок говорил, нет? Он один раз одно, одно слово точно сказал. Ну, mm. с, 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 ну, то есть повторил. Я слушал внимательно, но я не услышала. Did you think that you had any uh, stupor, stupor situations? Um, not any stupors, but um i had some delays on words that i had to try and slow down and mm -hmm. think about the first syllable But, so you thought and then you say it right as i didn't heard any of the stupors right so you used all the knowledge uh yes yeah or or part of the knowledge oh. um, you know so well, yes some I, yeah Uh, his his name, I don't know if you wanted to ever read about him. This is how you spell his last name. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Oh, first like Dutch? Uh, uh, yeah, maybe uh, Jewish. Oh. It's like a Jewish last name. Um, yeah. Ah, Schwarz. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably Schwarz. Right? Of course, that <laughs> explains how the expensiveness of his. They know how to make money. Oh, you're, yep, yep, that is true, especially in Manhattan, New York. <laughs> well, probably uh, the he, most expensive part of the USA. Uh, yeah, that was Along very, with Los Angeles. Uh, oh, uh, yes, believe it or not, uh, one of the towns right near me was rated as the most rich or most expensive city in the USA. Mm -hmm. And I don't live in such a great, I live in a normal area with the houses and the people, but uh, not too far away from me is a very nice area where it's a lot of old money. Does that make sense? Old no. money is, old money is when uh, many generations of the family have been rich. Oh, so they are just getting, getting some businesses or something. Uh, it's that, or it's um, some of the, like, the 
older relatives were rich, then when their kids were born, they didn't have to work because they already had so much money in the family. And then when their kids were born, the grandchildren, they already had all the money. Mm -hmm. So it's sometimes it just gets passed down throughout the family. So sometimes it's known as old money. Uh, it's not new money because nobody had to work for it. Right. It was already there. Oh, 50 that's years why ago. it's old. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, but they have some very, very nice houses up there. But as you said, yes, New York and probably San Francisco or Los Angeles mm -hmm. are very expensive. And with that speech therapy course I went to, it was a group of maybe 10 or 12 other students. So it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one session. So mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't really like that. Um, I felt no. you get it less. Work. It doesn't work, I don't think. Yes, because there were some um, other students there that were very severe stutterers. Mm -hmm. That word I just said. Severe. Yes, I, I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, you just slowed it down, but you said it. Okay. Yes. Um, but you can do better. Right? Uh, yes, exactly. Good. And you know what? He, he sent us home after the uh, class with a rubber tube, mm -hmm. a, rubber, a rubber hose that we were supposed to put in our mouth and practice on blowing the air out so that it was easy. Very stupid. Very strange. <laughs> very strange. Very stupid. Rubber, like what is this? rubber? Uh, a, ru a rubber, um, a rubber tube, um, about this long. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. It, you, have you? Uh, do you know when you give blood at a hospital? Mm -hmm. and you have to tie maybe a tube around you so they can see your veins. Mm -hmm. They ever do that? Yes. Uh, Okay, it was that same tube. It was like a rubber tube like that, and we had to blow through it. And with our other hand, mm -hmm. feel the airflow. And if it was too little or too much airflow, we weren't doing it correctly. <laughs> and it just, it didn't feel natural. I didn't, I didn't stay with it. It did not feel natural. I tried it for about two weeks after the class, and it didn't feel natural. I said, I don't have a problem breathing. Why do I have to practice on my breathing? <laughs> Very strange, yes. Yeah. Uh, in that class, we also gave some resin-based tubes, which we had to use, and we had to be able to breathe. He said that I don't have any problems with breathing. Why would I breathe in the tube? У нас в России что-то похожее, когда работа идет со свечкой, то есть загорается свечка, и ты должен говорить так, как, чтобы эту пламя не затушить в, на каком-то расстоянии. В общем, это не то. Mm -hmm. Можно сделать yeah. маленький перерывчик, да? Да, если вы хотите иметь перерыв, тогда вернемся. Да, конечно. Окей. Как долго? Как долго? Ten minutes. Ten. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll call. We'll be back in ten. Okay. Bye bye. Different. Well, different way of explaining everything. Different. Uh, just. Uh, of course. Yeah. Different. Yeah. I would have so, too. I would have expected that as well. Yeah, that's that amount of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah, for us, it, it is even, even well. Yeah. Well, Anna, he's, well, he's, I think Anna increased her prices. She used really? to be a little cheaper, and then she uh, increased them. A while ago, they had a a, a sale. They had a discount, um, and then that ended at the end of the summer. So that was, I was almost going to pay for it, but I just never, something felt wrong. Something, I never got uh, a good feeling. Yeah, if that makes sense. Listen, you know, intuition. Your, your intuition and serendipity. Oh, that's a good word. Um, we have, there is a movie called Like This. Yeah. Maybe you have seen it. Uh, I've heard right? of it. With the yeah. banknote, 
the dollar back now, where yeah. she wrote the number. Oh, yes, 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 That's yeah. Great I, I've seen that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Serendipity, yep. Yeah. <laughs> do you see, do you guys see a lot of American films? Yes, we have a lot shown in the movie theaters, and uh, we can watch them online where not so right people we, mm -hmm. we, we still have see movie, movies for free yes yeah we sometimes have, yeah 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 the um, uh, bootlegs they're sometimes called do you ever hear oh. of that no uh, yeah bootleg i think that was a long time ago in american history people would hide things in their boots <laughs> in the wars and somehow that translated nowadays to stealing something so they're stealing the movies yes. <laughs> well some of it's getting more popular to buy them but still not so well, yeah i don't know it just feels not so bad i don't know why yeah yeah well it, it's expensive sometimes too either buying them or going to the movies um here less and less people are going to the movies because it could it could be expensive and now everybody streams uh netflix mm -hmm. if you've heard of netflix and mm -hmm. hulu and amazon so everybody streams a lot of those and i do both you know uh, i do both but lately i haven't had time to watch anything just I've been focusing on this, and I haven't watched TV in the last three days, which is very strange for me. Question you control. <laughs> follow up question. Yeah, do a follow up question. Как он понял, как ему убирать, удалять, работать со страхом перед речью? Вот сейчас мы его проверим, насколько он понял. Да, именно попробуем вытащить из него информацию, которую он усвоил. И если почувствуем необходимость, то дозагрузим ту информацию, которую мы считаем нужной. Check, check up question, I think. How do you how do you understand you need to um, get rid of the fear before speaking? Oh, okay. You want me to write it down for my my own um, my own education. Alexander is always worried after his experience about the um comprehension comprehension of all the information yes yes is there is there anything he wants to tell me that's uh more correct than what i just said mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh okay <laughs> okay для того чтобы сбавляться от страхов перед речью связанных с заиканием to get rid of that with вы не будете скучать за это Hey, how are you? What's going on? Ну, Снежка, наверное, смотрите. Uh, are you on? Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, are you on the way to the restaurant? Or the, the bar restaurant? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you wound up going there a little later today? Yeah. You mentioned on the text messages that you um, were annoyed or you had an annoying day so what happened yesterday was it bad <laughs> oh okay yeah yeah oh nice let me know if you need help with the electronics and stuff, you know? I don't know if you're doing it on your own or if Cable is doing it, the company. Oh, I see. 
Oh, okay. So Cablevision was really just for the internet? For the internet? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. The, yeah. Yeah, like the packages. Yeah, a lot of bars tend to have the satellite dish anyway. Anyway. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Did you uh, take Jude to the restaurant while you were working or no? Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. using tools and, and dust in the air and, in the air and were you and sanding anything, anything yet? Anything yet? Yeah. yeah. Are you doing any of that any sanding of that project, sanding project uh, today? Uh, today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Did you purchase uh, any of, of the sanding paper or the sanding screens? Or the sanding screens? All right. Uh, did you wind up getting two, like a heavy grit and maybe like a fine one? Okay, good. Good, yeah. Uh, I mean, perhaps, you know, like I said, if you still want, I may be available perhaps by 1 o'clock. So if you still need me to pop by... Uh, all right, all right. Are you finishing any of that project uh, today, or are you planning on doing some of it tomorrow as well? Yeah. All right, well, yeah, I should be able uh, to stop by tomorrow for a couple of hours. So let me know. Let me know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. <coughs> Restaurant Depot, where is that? Close by? Oh, all right. Uh, me? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, do you need any help? I've never been over there. I mean, if I'm around, I can, I can take a ride or not. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll, I'll send you a message uh, tomorrow. But um, I just wasn't sure if you were taking back any uh, restaurant supplies, you know, big stuff. Oh, oh I see. Yes. What do you have, uh, like a, a, a merchant account with them or like a, you know, you know? Oh, I got you. Oh, okay. Is is that uh is that by that? Yeah, it's not bar boy, is it? Oh, okay. I got you. North of the movie theater. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Is it near Conklin at all? Uh, yes, I think it does, actually. Yes, yeah, it does, it's not up there. It's not up that, there. Far up. that far up? That far up? Yeah, I've probably yeah. passed probably by passed that store. I just, over there, there's a lot of there, a lot industrial, of industrial um, places. places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, well, yeah, let All me right, see well, what's yeah. going on tomorrow morning. Tomorrow and morning. Uh, if, yeah, I if I am available, I'll let you know as far as stopping as far by as stopping Restaurant by Depot. Restaurant and then if anything, then if, anything uh, if that doesn't happen, I can meet you over at Elsie's. I should be able to. Um, and maybe we could bang that out for a, a couple of hours or, you know, if you feel like it. Yeah, if you feel like it today, you know, you could just scuff it up a little or if you're going to smooth it out that's great uh, just don't go too deep because then it might start taking the, the finish off i mean the uh stain uh yeah yeah plus i think that would be a good place to start especially if you're just feeling it out you know in the nook area 
Okay. Yeah, or or if anything, yeah, just, do anything just do all the bottoms. <laughs> you know, um, uh, you know, uh, you may not really have to even sand, sand a lot of the plywood sand. backing uh, yeah. unless you could do a light little scuffing of it, clean it, and then put maybe like a second or a third coat on it to make it a little thicker, a little a little more a little more shiny. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, all right. Uh, and is that oil based? Do you know? Is it? Prob yeah, it probably is like regular oil. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because obviously that will have to, like each coat will have to uh, dry overnight or usually like eight hours. Um, but if you want to, yeah, you might be able to put like three, three or four coats on it just to kind of thicken it up and make it look almost like how a bar top is. Uh, like a normal wood bar top, you know, if you really want to. It's a lot of steps, but at the same time, if you do it right the first time, um, it'll, it, yeah. And then, you know, while you have the, like, time now for it to sit overnight for, you know, a couple of days, a couple of coats in a row. So just just play it by ear. And I'll talk to you tomorrow, I guess. Yes, I'm yes. still thinking about still Vin's thinking picture. About Vin's picture. <laughs> <laughs> like both of them. Yeah, I know that was yeah. just funny. You know, I've been helping yeah. Adam at helping his uh, new house uh, as well lately. We ripped up all the carpets, and uh, that was tough work. But yeah, he he, uh, he uh, appreciated the help. So that was nice. So that was nice. No, I thought he was a handy guy with tools, but uh, I had to bring all the tools. He he asked me how to turn a vacuum on. <laughs> uh, a shop vac. A sh yeah, a shop vac. He was like, yeah, no, he's actually handy with the work once he's just told what to do. But as far as being that manly guy with tools and things, yeah, he's not that way, but he realizes now he has to accrue. Um, a lot of tools eventually. Yes, yes, especially to save the money, obviously. You know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, uh, yeah, I will probably talk to you sometime uh, earlier tomorrow. I should be available. All right. All right, take care. All right, bye-bye. Yep, bye-bye. Yep, bye-bye. Okay. Did you get that conversation? <laughs> yes. No, that was speed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, for sure. It's a joke, of course. He's very concentrated. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. Yeah, that was my friend. He's opening a restaurant and a bar. Он звонил другу на твой ресторан и бар. Yeah. What kind so, of yeah, so I'm going to be helping him. I've been helping him lately uh, uh, just clean things and install new chairs and wood and refinish everything nicely. So I'm going to probably help him uh, sometime tomorrow as well. So he appreciates that help. Um, I'm helping everybody. We are... You're a good person. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm helping a friend who just moved into a house. I'm helping my sister who's moving into a house, and she lives in New Jersey. It's about two hours away. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, speech, I mean, he's, he's a close friend. Uh, sometimes I'll talk fast with him. That time I wasn't talking fast, but he talks kind of quick. So sometimes I can be that way with him, but then I have to substitute a word. This time I didn't substitute any word. Um, you may have heard there might have been a few words that I tried to ease out or ease into the first. Uh, yes, I heard shiny word was... Uh, yeah, shiny and uh, location and a few other ones. Yeah, I don't have the memory of it, unfortunately. Yes, but uh, well, I heard there were some. Yeah, 
That phone call was recorded. If that helps and you need it, tell me I have the file. Yes, <laughs> запись, если надо, еще раз послушать, но мы, в принципе, слышали его. If Alexander wants to fall asleep again while listening to the conversation. Если вы хотите еще раз уснуть. А он записывал это. Yeah. Пусть, в общем, в следующий раз смотрите. So as far as the fourth day, when is that usually? Like a week later, a few days later? Like would it be next Wednesday or? Когда обычно четвертый день? А, через неделю. In a week. А в эту неделю много речевой практики. Ну да, я тебе сказал. Для того, чтобы потом, именно то, что сделает Снежка, да, он отпускает людей на третий день, говорит, что ребята, вы там сто процентов избавились, и когда у них начинает проблема, то они думают, что с ними что-то не так, и что как бы им не дали времени на обработку, а сказали, если ты нормальный, ты можешь говорить нормально. Mm -hmm. То есть люди сами себя начинают загонять вообще, ну, в дикую яму депрессии, это, это если у них что-то не получается, потому что им авторитет сказал, что если они будут дальше заикаться, то они будут ненормальными. Хотя это нормально, да, то есть да. первую неделю где-то где совершать ошибки, потому что если раньше их было там тысячи, да, mm -hmm. вот. Why Alexander decided to do uh, the fourth day in a week? That is because again, on his own experience, he understood how important is support after some time. That of course you will have some stupors later, but it's fine. And uh, comparing to Snezhka approach that he says you're fine and if you have something wrong or you're feeling not right or not comfortable you just um, because of these problems it's you only you and uh, well do whatever you want <laughs> i won't be in this anymore and this is not right because every person ha should have a well chance to to talk about it to yeah. have some even not for so long maybe for an hour or two just to check to give the feedback give the some thoughts <laughs> Yes, he is a man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's wow. That that is uh, a that funny was, picture. Yes. Okay, so. Поэтому смотрите, как бы, да. А вы успели говорить? Да. Да. Для этого и берется неделя для того, чтобы именно первую неделю, если первая практика, там. Больше всего может появиться вопрос. Mm -hmm. В основном люди на них отвечают сами. То есть у меня вот даже кто заказывает четырехдневный курс, но ну, это русские, да, можно сказать, и как бы эм, они половина на четвертый день даже не приходит, потому что они уже поняли, как бы, да, что им работает. Они, они уже сам делают, они уже делают правильный анализ и дополнительный анализ им уже не нужен. То есть они могут со мной по WhatsApp пообщаться. Mm -hmm. И они мне сами говорят, что да нет, я, в принципе, понял, давай, если что, короче, будет у меня вопрос, я тебя наберу. Вот так вот. Mm -hmm. То есть это тоже можно озвучить, что как бы, но эта штука хорошая, да, потому что есть возможность, как бы, ты, ты не говоришь, что все, пока. Mm -hmm. So you still have a chance, but even some Russian students, they, um, they are so aware of all information and they just have They know they have a backup in Alexander's mm -hmm. <laughs> person, mm -hmm. whom he they can well send a message or an audio, record just something, and they will have an That's correct, great. answer. Yeah. But if you know that you need, of course, you can have this fourth day. But 
well, three days I usually for uh, that kind of uh, not so severe stuttering is enough, but of course, if it's something more strong, then there are more time needed. But yes, yeah. that's why it's good. That's why it's more mm, not personal, but more uh, uh, thorough. Thorough and. Uh, Like, well, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Давайте я еще объясню, закончили, да? То, что очень важно понимать, что результаты как через три дня, так и через одну, две, три недели, это промежуточный результат. You should understand. Это очень важно. It's very important that all the results, even after three days or after three weeks, are only the results, not the final results so it's um, it's still the process and you need to feel yourself in different situations in well in all life situations open your potential Yeah, it takes a little time. I, I know even, what's it, 214090? Um, yes. Where, uh, yeah, it's like the, the three weeks. That's a little bit of time. It's a little bit of time. Yeah, it's a little bit of time. Yeah, it's a little bit of time. Alexander also likes this um, method or yeah. the article. Но это не значит, что до 90 дней, либо там в течение там до 40 дней мне было сложно. То есть были такие моменты, когда я после двух недель мог несколько часов говорить без заикания, даже без остановок. То есть были такие моменты. Не всегда, но были. Ну, где-то 80 на 20 были. Было первые 2-3 недели. И я считаю, что это хорошая динамика. Где-то бывает 90 на 10, в принципе. Но даже если были эти 10%, то это не жесткие ступора, да? А по большей части остановки, продумал, что как бы, да, то есть вспоминаешь, чему тебя учили, там что-то свое уже нарабатываешь и действуешь правильным образом. Не пытаясь себе противодействовать своему личному аппарату, своим же усилиям. Mm. Well, make problems for yourself with your previous uh, habits. Just uh, move on. But yeah. for well, some time, uh, well, it's different for everyone. Like someone has the result like 80% of good speech, 20% of bad. Well, it depends on you. But still, uh, of course. For you, it's mostly the mental processing and getting focused on the right things. Yeah, the focus on the right things, especially uh, yes. in the moment, I guess, rather than, um, as I said earlier, maybe uh, working on the way my mouth is and, and, and my tongue. I know that's a part of it, but I think I'm maybe comfortable enough with those uh, mm -hmm. where I need to focus on the methods and the words and um, more so. Mm -hmm. So I definitely feel that. Um, so uh, on the fourth day, is that um, normally something that it's just a checkup, like just for some feedback or is it usually another four hour session? What do you know? Um, Well, as I said, usually people even don't take the first day as they are so oh, okay. confident in their information they got. But uh, yes, usually it's more like fourth day or, or like questions or... Mm -hmm. um, well, in your opinion, do you f does you and Alexander feel that I'm the type of speaker or I could benefit from a fourth day? 
or should we wait and see or should I wait and see how I feel in this next uh, week? Ему uh, ну, ну, по, понадобится ли ему четвертый день, как, к какому типу он относится людей, он сам еще не знает, поэтому мне интересно. Становиться опытом, конечно, так нельзя сказать. То есть, nothing. пока он не был в опыте в своем, в будущем, да, mm -hmm. то есть он же сам все будет понимать. You will understand it yourself. Так сложно спрогнозировать you на самом деле, потому что от ощущения от понимания зависит. As you feel, as you understand, but of course, well, we will be glad, and that is uh, that you can have in a week or in a month. Or... I see. Но я думаю, по любому понадобится, поскольку он иностранец и мы. As you are foreigner, probably you will need it. <laughs> ah, okay. Кое-что не прошли. Из-за этого, да. Из-за перевода. Из-за времени на перевод. Вот. И поэтому, как минимум, будем смотреть его обратную связь, будем с ним общаться четвертый день и, а, а, и общаться по поводу его ошибок. Yes, we will discuss everything. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. I trust you guys. I trust your opinion. <laughs> so that's great. And, um, and, and, uh, and, um, okay. So, and then I guess in, in the next week I could, you know, either just contact you via mm -hmm. WhatsApp, maybe ask a couple of questions if I need to, or, and then right. see what happens if we feel that, you know, in a week I need a little fourth day or maybe in a couple of weeks, I guess yes. we'll, we'll see what happens. Right. As you, as you know. As you <laughs> yes, as I wish. <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. I mean, uh, is this the end of the session? Uh, we, I think we did four hours. What do you guys feel? Ну, смотрите, то, что как бы моя обратная связь, да, а, то, что я сам успел передать Брайну, ну, где-то это больше 50% того, что я обычно передаю русскоговорящим людям, uh -huh. да. И он, наверное, понимает, почему, потому что был перевод, был обратный перевод. Да. Uh -huh. Но я надеюсь, что этой базы знаний ему хватит для того, чтобы выйти на... Well, as as far as you are not the um, very big satirist, you know, I, uh, Alexander understands that because of the translation, even that we have these long sessions, this um, he gave you about 50% of the whole information, but still, according to your hard working, It can be enough for you to get rid of all the problems you want. I see. As well, for some people, it's not enough. I see. And they need more and more and more. But oh, you take information so deep that it's uh, it's probably enough. Helpful. Um, Help, helpful enough for your. Normal mm -hmm. speech. I see. You think on having some more English videos um, on uh, YouTube? I know you posted a couple of uh, videos in English. Yes, you... that was a plan. Oh, okay. And the reason, he just asks for video again. Ah, he asks, why he needs a translator if you are a foreigner. Well, you can say, 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 то у нас пока такого видео нету. Нет, ну, он спрашивает еще про, в принципе, про типа тех, которые уже есть, две, всего лишь две штучки. Будут ли еще? Какие две штучки? Видео со мной на английском. Александр. Видео. А. -а, -а. На английском. Ну, так они еще будут в будущем. Ну, вот я про это и говорю. Да. А, -а, -а. Uh -huh. Yes, of course. Stop. That was Alexander's idea, and I was just, I was just doing everything. No, I understand. Yeah. Well, but it's uh, yeah. of course it's a plan. There, there should be more videos like Anna, 
Like an editor has a lot of videos. They are, well, some of them are, of course, very interesting, helpful, especially yeah. the short ones. I think I will start with more with short ones as it's easier for me to get to give the information like in two or three minutes mm -hmm. because, well, the 10 minute one was a little bit tough <laughs> to, to give everything and uh, yeah. It was pretty good, though. I mean, yeah, you, you had a, a good summary of it, though. You know, I told you that. I said, oh, yeah, I, I understood it well. It was a good overall summary of it without it being too complicated, you know? That's great. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But, and I'm curious, does Alexander understand English or only a little bit? Насколько вы понимаете английский? Просто He's like, nah. He's learning, but oh, good. he has too much work. So uh -huh. He probably right. knows more English than it's I know Russian. Show. <laughs> well, yes, he learned. Uh, actually, and not exactly sure. So let me just, uh, my phone just turn off the ringer there. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll be getting messages from my uh, sister because they're moving soon and, and she wants me to um, help uh, in a week or two, maybe stay there. Uh, actually, um, 17th, I believe, um, which is sort of in two weekends, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, Not the Saturday, next Saturday. Next Saturday, yeah. And then, you know, it was like she didn't really give me um, much choice. And I said, yeah, I'll help you. And then she's like, well, you know, we have to know now. And I was like, all right, but that's in like two weeks. Let me just figure out what I got going on. And I'm like, well, doesn't he have his friends that live there too? Of course, I'll come and help. But mm -hmm. if for some reason I'm late or I can't come that day, come the following day. But it always seems like it's either he doesn't want to ask his friends or they're not as around. Or in Jersey, he's kind of spread out a little too, you know. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're going to Tom's River, which is a little further down. But he does have a friend that lives there. Um, but... Um, uh, uh, yeah, so, and then, you know, I still feel bad because yeah, she's sending me a lot of pictures of uh, the baby and I haven't, uh, I haven't seen him, you know, in like, a, like in person in maybe like a month and I just feel kind of bad, like maybe I'm missing out on certain things, but of course I'm trying to figure out my own things, my own self. Um, so, yeah, I just feel a little bad and then of course she doesn't really have much family involved you know mm -hmm. my mom would have been of course my dad is you know doesn't really care much and he doesn't even really want to drive to jersey that's a little hot mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah that's um yeah you know like i said yeah she sent me pictures like crazy and she's like oh i'm sending you all these pictures you know you don't mind right i said no no i was like don't worry i'll save them they're all going in the cloud um i said no yeah i like seeing um what's going on over there you know and then it just kind of stinks, I guess, now that I've had some of the opportunities last few months since they're only about an hour away. Now going to Tom's River, they're probably going to be almost two hours away or mm -hmm. hour 45 minutes, which is yeah. going to be uh, a little tough. But they'll have their own house, so that'll be nice. And very shortly, they are going to take a lot of stuff at home, <laughs> in my home. So I said, really? And they're like, yes, because we'll have space. Uh, he has his own little van that he recently bought, um, so he's like, don't worry, I can come over in the van, we can fit most of the stuff, and then if we need to fit any larger things, uh, we can rent the truck, or, but then, well, yeah, there's maybe about only three large pieces of furniture, so that could be interesting, finally getting yeah. some things going um, on my end, mm -hmm. and for them to then start using things, haven't seen grandma in maybe two months mm -hmm. and again i just feel bad i just yeah. it's just that i haven't really either felt like going out there she's in bellport mm -hmm. so if you know where that is mm -hmm. it's like it's not you know mm -hmm. too crazy um and i feel bad because then i have memories of my mom where i think i had a lot of the thoughts of um oh well i don't have to be involved as much because she's in safe hands because she's being taken care of well you know, I, it's not like she's in a hospital or something. So I think even w like with my mom, I figured, oh, okay, I could either give my mom a little break and she could just focus on maybe healing at the time, getting off of the vent. That was the whole goal of her going to that place. And, you know, when you're at the nursing home too, you know, all the nurses are there helping you get out of bed and do stuff. So and I remember one of them said, 
you know, um, you can absolutely visit, but you don't have to be here all day like you're used to at the hospital. You know, your mom probably needs a little time to adjust here. And I, I was like, okay, yeah, I understand that. And I guess it was a little sense of relief mm -hmm. for me. And then not knowing three, four days later, you know, uh, so I still have a lot of guilt about that. So even now, some of those thoughts are like, damn, if I don't see grandma soon, or I feel like I'm missing out on these times right. to see her right. um, and the baby on the other end. And I still feel guilty. I was talking to a friend a while ago about maybe early in the week, uh, last week, um, about, you know, you got to, you got to do your own thing. And don't always worry about everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know, but then, you know, it's that same uh, thoughts that I always have of, aren't you supposed to, you know, you don't have to feel forced, but um, I don't know. It's like, I'm always worried about what other people, uh, not so much what they think, but I guess like what is the right thing to do or if they need help, you know? So throughout this week, I helped my uh, friend at his house again. Uh, he really appreciates it, so I totally understand that. And it's a little bit of my expertise from the wood mm -hmm. and the floors. And it, it's just kind of fun, us just talking. You know, I wasn't there really that long, just maybe like two hours, because uh, we almost finished up everything anyway. So, and, um, so yeah, so, uh, you know, I was helping him, uh, of course, and I tend to be really nice, like, well, you got work. You have a, he's a teacher in, like, uh, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So let me know whatever's good for you, and I'll let you know if I'm around, you know, and most of the time I might be around, or right. I gotta see if I feel like it, you know, um, but I always made time for them, and then I went to my friend's uh, new place that they're opening up, their bar place, because they're almost getting done with that, so I said I'd like to come by anyway, check it out, and whatever help, you know, you like need, you know, hey, I haven't been here in two weeks, you know, I don't mind helping you, you know, and he was like, oh, thanks, you know, I really appreciate it, you know, and I was like, yeah, you know, this is like, you're, you're one of my best friends for whatever, 30 years, and this is your thing, and I think it's really cool, and, you know, I don't mind being a little, a little part of it, you know, um, so, and then, of course, he, he did certain things, like the booths that they built, the wood, and they kind of just put finish on it, you know, the polyurethane, and then he's like, it's really rough, and I'm just like, well, why don't you ask me first, <laughs> you know, they did that raw sawn pine, if you've ever heard of that, it's that, it's that, like, textured, rough look uh, right. of big, like, um, like, it looks like it's kind of sawn, it's got all the, like, little rough, like, kind of mm -hmm. swirls in it, you know, that's sort of a style that you might see at certain places, generally it would be on the walls, because you're not really going to touch it, you know, um, or perhaps the floor, I don't know. Um, so they actually, uh, had it, um, uh, on the sides of the, uh, booths. So I was telling them like, and it's, it's funny, even though it's not my place, it's like, I'm thinking ahead or mm -hmm. down the line saying, Hey, listen, and obviously I tend to do that maybe a little too much, but in some ways it does come in handy. Um, and I was saying, well, you know. You're going to have people maybe leaning up against it, rubbing up against it. What if a girl has, like, some nice dress or whatever, and then it catches up against it? I go, just, like, little things like that, you know? And I said, you know, you really should have sanded it first, or I wouldn't have even put any finish on it um, and maybe done something a little different, or it could have just scraped it down lightly so it still has the look. But, you know, because mm -hmm. when you put finish or, you know, if you make wood wet, it yeah. absorbs. Right. So, of course, it's going to make it, you know... So I was helping them a little bit with that, but then uh, we were basically cleaning up and putting everything in their storage, all the tools and all the junk, and so now it looks, you can see the nice open space. They might be opening on that weekend that my sister wants me to help, and originally I was planning on being with them, so I always feel like I'm caught up yeah. in that, yeah. well, what's the right thing? Well, I should help my sister, but then I miss out on, I always feel like that always happens, and then no matter what I do, it's going to be a bad thing. Well, my friend will be mm. angry or anything but I just thought it would be a nice thing but of course that's their target date mm. and you know how it is right nobody mm. really ever meets that target date mm. um so yeah so yeah I was doing that uh this week uh well because I was helping them out cleaning both my friends cleaning their homes I was able to clean my area a little more so I basically got out all I got rid and put everything in the basement mm -hmm. uh, out of the living space upstairs. All the paint stuff, all the tools, just everything I had just laying around throughout the like summer. And I just kind of shoved everything in that area. So I pretty much got all of it out. So the other day I was like, 
still have stuff on the kitchen table I gotta figure out um, and I don't have a lot of clothes storage over there everything's just kind of out in the open and there's three pieces that my sister is going to take uh, like the wicker white painted wicker mm -hmm. like fancy oh well not fancy but just that style that my grandmother uh, always liked and my sister said oh that would actually fit really well here uh, so I'm not using that as any storage um, plus I wouldn't put tools in that anyway <laughs> you know um, so anyway um so recently i was like oh i can just like use this as a normal kitchen table and just eat at it like if i make something to eat just like something so stupid like that and simple just eat at it i still could watch tv if i wanted to instead of you know making having a snack table or um whatever so i was like okay let me just move all this stuff out so at least that's a little more organized now so okay. i do feel a little better okay. i put more stuff in her room where I can't really get in the room. Everything's sort of in the doorway, but I wanted to rearrange some of the shelves. She has a lot of bookshelves. Some of them were either in the way or it was just too much. So I asked my sister, of course, well, there's one or two bookshelves that are really nice. You know, I don't know if you want to take them. The only thing is they're, they're already built, you know, and so just figure that out. And so she's like, yeah, well, you know, we don't have any guest room really in this new house. We don't have space for that, but we obviously have a lot more space. So let's, Let's just play it by ear in this next, you know, couple of weeks. I said, all right, good. And eventually the whole garage thing. So we had a front door installed last week. First, we have, we've had the original front door on the house since like 1948 or something. I kept it. I think I might have mentioned I was yeah. going to keep it. So that's in the garage. Um, and of course, it's like everything is so late. My mom wanted it done. And then it was always like some argument with my father. I, you know, just like stupid stuff. My mom always wanted to make things nice. And it was always some argument or stressful thing when it shouldn't have been. And, of course, my father was never really helpful. So now he gets it, you know. Uh, but he kept making comments, and me and my sister were saying, Mom, would I really like this just because it really updates the house and there's a nice change. And, um, you know, so anyway, yeah, uh, we, we had that done. So um, I had I had to finish painting some of the things because mm -hmm. they reinstall all new moldings, but mm -hmm. they don't paint them. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, there's another little project. You know, I mean, that's going to be easy. It's just my, my father won't do it. He won't care, of course. I don't really expect him to do it, but it's like he won't really kind of get involved. So I told him, like, oh, well, I just painted everything upstairs, but uh, for doing some outdoor stuff, you got to have stuff made for outdoors. So, all right, I guess I'll go buy a $20 thing of outdoor paint, even though I'm only painting, like, some area that big. You know, the smallest you can get is, uh, I believe it's a quart. Um, maybe a pint, two quarts of a pint, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, yeah, so eh, it's just always like a little something because it's the same old thing. Even if he wants to try and update a little something, uh, nothing is going to be normal anyway, or nothing's ever going to be finished. And uh, of course, I know the whole story. It's just, well, something has to be done. And I feel like, well, the only one who's going to do it is me, you know, so I guess I have to do it. And then, and that's the proper way when you get something done, don't have it half-assed, you know, don't have it 75% done, just finish it up. You know, it's not that big of a deal. So, so it's that usual today, briefly earlier, he tried roping me into some politic, uh, talk, you know, and I was just like, you know, you know, uh, just to say, well, you know, both sides of this and that, and yeah, I probably should vote, but I don't know. I honestly don't even know what any of these people are, their their uh, policies exactly are, and I was like, I don't know, I might, but I'm not sure. So yeah, he of course went on his little tirade, and I was just like, all right, yeah, okay, you know, and just like went upstairs and said, all right, I have to leave in like a little bit, you know. Um, sleep's been weird. Um, the wrestles like has not been there. Okay. So that's, you know, all of a sudden this last couple of weeks, uh, I still feel restless at night. Sometimes I feel like I need to take a Xanax. Um, I've been sort of maybe only sleeping four, five, six hours, but then maybe at six, seven in the evening, I might take another hour nap because I still feel tired from only sleeping four or five hours or six hours. Um, so uh, so I've noticed I can't I've been trying to go to sleep a little early too. like the other night It was about 11 o'clock uh, Last night was about 1230 um, But then it's like 
I can't. I, I'm restless. Uh, I'm just like I don't know. I, I I feel tired, but I don't feel tired. Um, it's just maybe I'll fall asleep for an hour, and then I'm like, oh, I hope it's like four or five hours mm-hmm. later, and then I realize no, it's not even an hour later, and I'm just like, wow, wow, you know. So I've just noticed that um, lately, and any of the medicine I've been taking usually in the morning after I wake up, haven't had the the nausea that much lately. Uh, making sure I'm taking it with something, okay. uh, you know, food. The saltines I have, I eat those anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, I took them a couple of times a week or so ago when I felt that mm-hmm. queasiness. Um, and, uh, yeah, it definitely helped, of course. Um, but lately, it's like maybe I'll have a donut or, like, one of those cereal bars yeah. or something, yeah. you know. And then later on, I'll have, like, a regular oatmeal or something like that or eggs or something, you know. Um so yeah, the, the the sleep has been mm. uh, still uh, a little bit of an issue where, like I said, I wake up every hour, or it'll be wow, it's four a.m. and then I'm like, I guess I should maybe just get up, you know, right. and then maybe I won't, and uh, and then I'll open up my eyes and it's like about five thirty, mm-hmm. and I'm like, all right, I guess I'm up. So I've been doing that lately, like kind of being up early. And okay. getting some things done. Sometimes it's nine o'clock, and I'm like, "Wow, it's only nine o'clock." Yeah. And so the other day, I was able to get some things done. So that is a, yeah. a nicer feeling. I don't feel as okay. up all night and just you know whatever, wasting time and depressed and tired. Mm-hmm. I'm a little hesitant about this time of year now because I hate this time of year when it gets mm-hmm. dark early. But I would say, obviously, it just started. You know, with that time change. Um, but I don't feel as down as I would. I okay. think even last year it was the same thing. It didn't affect me as much. It's still there, and I just hate it. And I still feel like, you know, oh, it's dark already, and you kind of feel closed up. At least I do. Um, so I haven't felt any of that yet, but um, I know that's coming, you know, with the weather and all that. But uh, I have the exercise on my mind, especially with this, uh, it's bothering me. Um, yeah. and two of my friends, even two of them that are opening their, their bar, they're like, yeah, this is the hezi- heaviest I've ever been, De- them. And I said, yeah, this is the heaviest I- I've ever been too. And they were like, why are you eating my crap? I go, eh, you know, I, I eat a little bit of bad stuff, but then I used to burn it off, but I also eat really good stuff. I love vegetables and all the stuff that everybody hates, you know? I said, but I think a good portion of it was some meds I was on. <laughs> I go, but it lingered, you know, and they're like, and they even said, yeah, but isn't that just bloatedness? I said, nah, I was hoping it was, but no, it really isn't, you know, it is like fat Mm -hmm. and changes the way that your body deals with carbs and all that. And I said, I never had any issues with, um, really much effects from medicine. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this one did, uh, affect me, you know, so uh, yeah, so I had got my, my bike that I never used yet. <laughs> um, I got it sort of out of where I had it in the basement, and I kind of have it set up where, okay, let me, I still have to adjust it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I either just got to go on YouTube, figure that out, um, and just kind of get that done so I can maybe get in a sync of doing mm-hmm. that, because, of course, it'll be more indoor uh, exercise. There were a few times when uh, I was up very late at night, and you mentioned... Just go outside or something. Mm-hmm. Go for a walk, even if it's like what, 1.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. I didn't mm-hmm. because I kind of was like, well, it was either bad weather or I was like, well, maybe I could do something else instead mm-hmm. of doing that. Um, I don't really know what I maybe did. Maybe I played a video game for a while just to get my, my mm-hmm. mind off it, but I felt like I was sitting too much. Yeah. Like I felt I needed to kind of yeah. get going with something. And some of that I... I it might be a little normal maybe, but some of that I don't know if it's part of a restlessness that maybe is a side effect. But it, again, it tends to happen at nighttime where mm-hmm. all the meds I'm taking hours earlier, like 15 yeah. hours earlier or yeah. something. So again, it's it's just tough to kind of feel everything out. Like nothing is always just like good. Yeah. It's always like a little something which I'm almost used to, but uh, it's frustrating. Have you had any more of that, you have like something with... Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, last last week or so, I did really notice that a lot. Uh, a little bit, yes, uh, a little bit. I, it's almost like a feeling of being winded. Mm-hmm. You know, if you like go up the stairs quick. I was trying to think, is it just because I'm going up the stairs? I mean, I'm not in that bad of shape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's tough to really tell. Um, so yeah, I was getting it a little bit, but not as much. Okay. So again, I don't I don't know 
what the deal is yeah. uh, with that, you know. And actually, I was a little worried uh, the other night. I took two Xanax, and I was almost, I rarely ever do that, but it does say you could take two in a day. Uh, at the same time, I don't know, mm-hmm. but I figured sometimes the one doesn't seem to mm-hmm. work anymore. Um, so I took the, like, two, and then I know it sort of slows your heart rate, I believe. And I'm kind of like, you know, people sometimes take this, and then they, like, don't wake up, or if they mix it with something. Obviously, I'm not doing drugs or anything, but um, I I guess lately I, I did buy another 12-pack of beer. It was something new I wanted to, like, try. So, you know, um, I would have maybe, like, two beers, but, you know, with dinner, um, and then whatever five hours later then i would have a xanax so okay. i was a little like hmm i don't know if that's so good even though i'm not taking it with it yeah you know but i'm i'm mindful of that and um uh yeah so i normally never drink at home uh, alone or just drink um but here and there sometimes i think either with that winded feeling of the restlessness i did want to have like mm-hmm. a beer or two just to calm a little bit um even though I totally, you know, understand everything uh, about that. Um, and, but most of the time, you know, I'm not just drinking just to, you know, whatever, get drunk. It's usually just, I don't know, feel like it, uh, a little relaxed, and then I'll usually have it uh, with food. But only lately, because I saw some on sale, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then our beer is at a 7-Eleven, actually, in Belmore, a new 7-Eleven that they built, right? They're all over the place. So uh, I bought a, a pack of that to bring to my friend's bar because mm. the other owner of the place uh i didn't know him that much and i uh, wanted him to at least try our beer and i thought it'd be nice if i just brought him something and our beer we know is going to be the first one on tap there so that's nice that i'm able to help my uncle out and be a part of that you know um so you uh actually when i was there he didn't um you know i even told him be honest with me if this is not your type of beer if you're not into like a belgian sort of a style if you're into a certain style like be honest like tell me whatever he's like no 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 i appreciate it thank you but we were just kind of working and stuff so he put it in one of their fridges because they got all the appliances Mm -hmm. you know thousands of dollars in that stainless steel restaurant quality stuff but it was nice to see how much that they got done in just not even two weeks since i was last there and uh, they did that trendy uh copper bar top so it's all copper um and that'll tarnish a little on purpose and then Mm -hmm. they'll probably then seal it with something so that should be interesting you know um and you know but again i'm involved in other people's projects which is nice but that's all it is though you know um of course let's say at my age if i had if i was settled a little maybe i could invest in something like this you know but of course i'm not there um at all um excuse me um yeah yeah so um, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, yeah, a lot of that was really uh, just a lot of, um, I guess, getting some things done. So I, I don't feel as run down, okay. maybe like I was mm-hmm. months ago or, okay. or, you know, the uh, Wellbutrin, I think it is, maybe that's helping. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember Sean mentioning that that can sometimes give you a little boost and it works mm-hmm. hand in hand, sort of. A bill of five and taken. You know, I know it's a, from what I understand, it's a small dose. Mm-hmm. I think it's 10. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't really notice anything. I can't really tell. Some, when I was t- t- talking with a friend, he was kind of like, uh, yeah, but like, how come, you know, you're on both of those? Why are you on Wellbutrin and Adelphi? I was like, uh, I don't know. Even like the other doctor I saw, he kind of questioned that. But then again, I haven't had any bad things from it and maybe I'll be weaned off it. Well, yeah, we said that we probably think we've done us. He started you on one to eventually wean you off of that. Oh, probably, right? I'm supposed yeah. to see him. I think it's on the 24th. I'm looking at now. Yeah, 24th. I think, yeah, yeah, I remember it was like right after Thanksgiving and... Yeah, Saturday. Saturday, okay. I know I was like, oh, is that going to be Black Friday? <laughs> like, you know, with traffic no, and everything. No, no. I don't go to any of the stores. I, if I order some great deals, it's online, right? You know, you got to do that. It seems like everybody's smarter now where they all... Will you be home? They do it now. Um, For the holiday, you mean? Or that weekend or whatever. Yeah. yeah um, I don't, again, well, that's the the other usual drama. You know, I haven't been talking with my sister and brother-in-law again because the whole thing. His other uncle called me two or three times this past week just to talk about things, ask if I heard anything else new on my end because they don't really seem to call him as much. Uh, actually, hardly ever. 
and usually I would be approached a little bit more. And I said, no, no, I haven't either. I said, I called Nicholas, our nephew. Mm-hmm. said, I gave him a call. The other, I felt like, I just, it was like, I think it was last Saturday. Um, I think I think it was this past Saturday or Friday. I forgot what it was. I just felt like calling him. I said, you know what, it was earlier in the day. Let me just see if he picks up, just see how he is. And it went right to like a uh, voicemail, I think. So I said, all right, I didn't leave any message. I just figured, well, he'll see my number. He'll call back and he never did. And, um, okay. yeah, you know, so we're still thinking like, well, where you, we would usually go to their house. I guess I could just somehow go just like I did a couple of years ago when I really was having problems with them. I just said, all right, I'll just try and enjoy the holiday over there. Just be normal. And if anything gets stupid, I'll just leave, you know? So this year that could happen again. I'm halfway expecting one of them to say, Hey, listen, you're always invited for the holiday. Are you going to come? That would be nice. And then my uncle with the beer and you know, my aunt, you know, um, that's my father's side of the family. And they mentioned it to me and my, and my sister because they want to see the baby again. Mm-hmm. They said, listen, instead of you driving from Jersey all the way out there um, in Patchogue, um, you know, you're, you're welcome to come to our house because they're right in Belmore also. And if you don't want to deal with whatever drama could happen. and But my aunt knows that my older sister doesn't like her at all, at all, for stupid reasons mainly because of my nephew's behavior and my my aunt will usually speak up Mm -hmm. and uh my nephew years back was getting too rough with her daughter i guess they're cousins i believe um and so she mentioned something about that she said hey hey, listen you know he's like getting uh a a little too rough you know you gotta rein him in a little or something and she didn't say anything nasty but ever since then, my, like, sister is all like, oh, my God, oh, my God, you know, just all, like, just stupid. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, they, they as parents, will do the, the, the same thing. They'll know his behavior. They feel embarrassed by it. But then on a rare occasion, if somebody else is reacting to it, uh, and not even in a nasty way or, you know, being very critical or anything, they immediately, like, just jump on you like, you know, like a, a rabid dog, you know. Um, so... So, um, so yeah, anyway, I, I messaged my aunt back. I said, well, I, uh, I appreciate it. I would love to come over. Let me play it by ear. I would actually rather come over to your house than go to my own family's house. Um, I said, but you know how it is. That'll probably cause a whole other thing, you know? And she's like, I know, but I don't, I don't want to get in the middle of it. I go, well, no, you know, you're, you're doing a nice thing. You're not doing anything inappropriate. I said, um, but let me just play it by ear. But And I said to her, but I remember you were the one, too, that said you got to weed your garden and it doesn't matter if it's family. And I totally understand that, but it, then I feel, again, I'm doing the wrong thing because then I'm the uncle, I'm an adult, maybe I should know better. Well, you know what I mean? Sometimes people split, you know, like they go somewhere for the main meal. And then try and squeeze in a little time somewhere else for dessert. I see what you mean. Yeah. You know, you yeah. can do that. You always see a lot of couples doing that. Like, they yeah. might go to the one parent, yeah, the other one parents. One side gets one, and one side gets dessert. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I never really think of that, I guess, because we're so used to, you know, you just spend the whole day at, at one place. But that's not a bad idea, actually. Um, yeah. This way you still do... A little something that something you might. That you want to do. Yeah. And then you're shortening the time. Yeah. Out yeah. There where it's only you're only there for dessert and then. That's true. Yeah, I could do that. Uh, I could see, or maybe I would probably perhaps go there first, you know, and then uh, have a little dinner, and then once that, and yeah. then instead of the whole hanging out video game thing, which yes. normally would be fun, then maybe go there. Yeah, let me see. The only nice thing that when I'm there, we sometimes everybody's up a little later. Oh, where sometimes my aunt, you know, they start getting tired by 9, 30, 10 o'clock, you know, yeah. which I'm not used to. But they're, they're very early people, you know, um, uh, which I'm starting to be lately, which um, I'm able to sleep better uh, closing both doors or having them almost closed because of the cat. You start scratching on it if I do not leave it open. You know, I saw something online where there's, um, there's like a uh, some hinge that they made specifically for cats really that you can just the corner of the door you cut 
Oh, and I see. It's a hinge, a special hinge for cats. Interesting. And it flips up. This way the door stays closed, but the cat still has access. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. I, yeah, because uh, the, the, um, the main door at the top of the stairs, you know, we have a door there because it used to be an apartment years ago, mm -hmm. and then it was my grandmother's apartment, so at least I have that at the mm -hmm. top landing. Is it landing. a wooden door? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a regular uh, inside wooden door. Like door okay. Yeah, it's not like it's like a big external no, separate entrance okay. door. Yeah, uh, it's, so, you know, obviously inside. I saw inside. that and I thought of you, and I was like, oh, Brian could use that. Yeah, yeah, really? But he could keep the door closed. <laughs> and then just yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that, you know, yeah. when, when you're not here. Yeah. You know, you know, I appreciate that. Yeah, I just that. thought it was like an add-on. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. Um, well, that does exist. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Probably people with similar right problems like that that uh, want to be yeah. able to keep their privacy, but but the animal still would like to. Yeah, uh huh. Don't want the door getting. Yeah, I know certain dogs too can be you know yeah. a little nuts yeah. and so scratching. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he'll just more reach under the like door because he he knows I'm in there and he's like hello, I want to come in, you know, because he's really taken, especially to me. I think cause since I've been up there. He now has a whole area that he feels comfortable with, so he's been on my bed and everything. So uh, mm -hmm. it, it's nice, but sometimes when I want to just shut everything mm -hmm. and just not be bothered even by him, it's a little tough, you mm -hmm. know. And once or twice when I did shut everything, then my father came up because he wanted to let our cat in to my area because he's like, oh, I don't know if you heard him yelling, you know, and this and that, you know. Um, you know, yeah, you know, I told them, oh, yeah, I did this upstairs, oh, I did this, I bought a new area rug, yeah, you know, things seem a little bit more comfortable and softer up there now, you know, a little quieter, too, um, as far as either mm -hmm. me not hearing as much down there, it's a little bit of a thicker area rug, one of those shag ones, but mm -hmm. it was shaggier than I wanted it to be, the picture looked different, but it's actually pretty nice, though, um, so, yeah, but, yeah, he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't, really care doesn't have any interest or you know um whatever even though he'll try and talk to me about you know yeah. things but there's just you know nothing there and i always have to just give him a heads up hey listen there's water on the floor downstairs under the water tank let's you know so i just give him a heads up give him a heads up but again should i at this age maybe be able to just go whatever i'll call i'll have it done yeah i feel like i should be but i'm not unfortunately and i feel like any money i'm spending is on me mm -hmm. maybe that's a little selfish but i almost feel like i don't care i need to do whatever i gotta do how are you doing with the finances and stuff? uh you know <laughs> i have the no interest uh credit card that i uh, i still have you know good credit it dropped a little because when you inquire for new credit, it usually will drop anyway. Yeah, you know, I'm just uh, making all my payments, but of course, um, you know, it's not like I can pay three, four, five hundred dollars and just get it off like I always did. I was gonna call Chase again and just ask them, you know, if they could maybe lower my interest until I pay off something. This one new card, I can't do it yet, but I can probably transfer either the whole or almost the whole balance. Um, yeah, uh, either the whole balance or almost um on my main credit card on my chase card um that i always paid off that was the main one i always used but that has a little bit of a higher rate so anyway that's got a fairly big balance on it now about 3500 and i was like whoa you know and that was just all things mm -hmm. adding up uh lately um and some of it, it's ebay fees you know like i don't know if i sell something for for 900 dollars. there's another hundred dollar ten percent thing you know plus maybe another 40 for shipping you know so then all of a sudden it just you know you gotta i guess lose money to make money or whatever it is a little and so yeah you know um this thing that the guy bought today was like 50 dollars, you know whatever but hey it was like a, a thing i had laying around it was a re remote control for um a higher end amplifier mm -hmm. uh that's uh what i got it off of a i bought it used years ago the amplifier and they sent me that remote that was the wrong one i was like wow it's brand new it's never been used i said you know what people that are into this high-end audio they they'll probably buy one of these and to buy new a remote it's, it's like 90 dollars uh i was trying to sell it for 65 and then the guy messaged me this morning hey listen you know 65 is a little pricey for an older model um device and a remote for it he goes can you do any better i said how about 50 he's like okay yeah great so you know it'll it'll, it'll cost me probably three dollars to ship it because it's like first class mail it's mm -hmm. nothing too crazy but hey you know 
Um, I have a bunch of other things on there. I have something for eight hundred dollars. I lowered the price by uh, twenty five, and I have about five people interested. And nobody's biting yet. Um, and on three forums where you could sell things, you know, a little bit more directly on the forum, mm -hmm. uh, and you don't have to deal with fees or anything. I have it on there, and I have it about a hundred dollars less on there because there won't be any fees uh, associated. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, people will easily go for it, you know. But you know, you know, you get a lot of views. Mm -hmm. You get some people on the rare occasion you might say, oh, how about we trade? Mm -hmm. You know, I have something that's very hot, and I'm just like, listen, now nah, you know, I'm not interested in any trades. I need the funds, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, um, on my one card, it's uh, something like 18 months for balance transfers, zero mm percent, -hmm. and also on purchases. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a little bit of advantage of that right now. I'm not with the balance transfer yet. I need to wait on that. Um, I think it's like you have to wait, I don't know, two weeks or four weeks in order uh, for you to be allowed to or something. I just have to double check. Um, so, uh, and you know, I'm like, well, with the holidays coming up, I'm not going crazy and I never usually do, but I guess I won't be as stressed because I guess I'll have time yeah. to then pay something because I'm not going to be accruing interest, you know? But I know from a long time ago to not get in a hole, and I'm already getting a little. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, that is a uh, a concern, of course. I'm 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 hanging on. I'm hanging have you, on. Have you asked your friends about like doing one night at the bar or something? Uh, we haven't talked about anything like that yet. I was just asking them like, oh, are you gonna uh, bartend a little? Are you gonna hire people? What are you doing? You know, uh, are you hiring a bunch of good-looking girls? Like, are you doing this? Are you doing that? And, you know, usually you kind of have to try, especially, mm -hmm. you know, business-wise, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, so, yeah, he was just telling me what they were planning, and, and they haven't really thought about that yet. Um, so, you know, I mean, it, it is something in my mind. I'm not really a service person, never did any of that. I don't know if I really want to, but then again, depending on what I could do there, I'm like, wow, like, if I was helping them out, it depends on what you do. I mean, you can make full four hundred dollars a night or something. I was like, damn, like I could easily, you know. Mm -hmm. I did have a thought in my head, like, but I, I never asked to borrow money. But I was almost maybe gonna ask my uncle with the brewery and say, hey, listen, do you have a little bit of money? Maybe I can borrow, and I'll just work it right off with you. I, I'm not doing that yet. I don't really feel right about that unless if it's really at the point where I would, and I'm sure they would help me a little but again I don't like to owe yeah. other people money especially family the only person I ever really asked to help me out was my mom years ago I said listen I'm getting on this debt payment plan yeah. they kind of would like a good like 1200 up front because then it starts it you already got it set and then now you're at like a low interest rate of like 10% or something or actually no it was lower than that it was like 5% and then you have, it was a four year plan and I paid off in about, uh, about a little under three which was nice uh, at the time and improved everything so like i said no from that experience to right now mm -hmm. but of course i'm mad because you know you got people going away uh my my, my brother-in-law's brother there going to st lucia or something everybody's doing this at this time of year and i'm just like damn like i haven't been away everybody does all these great things nobody invites me <laughs> um i had money years ago to even just go away on my own i just I don't know. I just, I didn't know what to do, didn't know where to go, uh, wanted to go away alone, but didn't feel right or ready. Uh, felt like, well, that would be great, but I don't know. I still feel like I want to, you know, blow my brains out. So, mm -hmm. like, why should I even go to, like, a nice place? It'll probably be a way, you know, you get all these stupid thoughts. But, um, and then I called a couple of hospitals only because, I don't know if I ever mentioned um, this jaw surgery. I was supposed to get a long time ago. Yeah. My teeth, there's a gap. Okay. And that used to be a little bit more of a problem when I was younger. Uh, I sucked my thumb when I was younger, but then it was also, I think, in the family that uh, some, some family members, I think, had their jaw a little bit like that too. Um, not just the like, teeth, but the jaw was just a little bit mm -hmm. misaligned slightly, but it was never a problem for these other people. But I guess when I was younger with the braces and it didn't close up any of this, and then I used to get little pains here because when you bite that, when I bite down, more, most of the pressure is on the molars mm -hmm. and everything, but not a lot of pressure at all on the front. Mm -hmm. Even eating pizza is weird. Mm -hmm. I can't really bite down the front. I got to put mm -hmm. it on the side. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of a functional thing and a visual mm -hmm. cosmetic uh, mm -hmm. thing. 
and I was supposed to get it when I was about 18 because they wanted to wait until you were like sort of fully grown. And even with my parents' insurance at the time, I think we still had to pay like 20000 out of pocket. And then several years ago, UPS, great team's this insurance, and that's what really was the final straw for me, saying when I really needed something, uh, that coverage wouldn't do anything. When you need, you know, your normal stuff, sure. Uh, it helped with the therapy a little, but even I still had to pay out of pocket for the therapy also. And then I would get it reimbursed, but not the whole amount. Uh, so anyway, at the time, I had to pay over $1,000 of my money to get a mold done uh, and a co consultation. I had to get that done, but you have to pay $1,000 for it. And then once it's reviewed, there's no guarantee. So then, you know, you don't get the $1,000 back, you know. So I remember that's exactly what happened, and, I, and that was when I was getting ready to quit the place anyway, and I was so fed up, and my mom was a little like, well, yeah, that would be great if you do that because you've been wanting it. Not that you have to. I think you look fine, but I remember the orthodontist talking to us about that a long time ago. She's like, but my insurance said it'll partially be covered, but I would still have to pay about 23000 of my own money. I was almost going to. And my mom was telling me, like, no, don't do that, you know. And I'm just like, I, I don't know. Like, you have insurance, but then I feel trapped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, years later now, le uh, a few days ago, I had the, the idea just to say, you know, I've been meaning to call, find out. Nobody gives you a straight answer. You have to have that pr procedure code. Uh, and Yeah. And when I called the hospital, they say they don't have it. And then the insurance says, no, we don't have that either. You have to talk with the doctors. And I'm just like... I don't understand that. If you're the the medical insurance company, you should have it. And I said, but like, why do you need that? Can't you just generally tell me if I would be covered? The insurance told me that I would be covered for it. And there would probably be no copay, which is like unreal because it's probably twenty, thirty thousand dollars mm -hmm. dollars freaking surgery, you know? Not that I really want to do it, but it's one of those things like, hey, you know, maybe it would be a nice thing or I've always wondered and hey, I could be dead in 20 years. Like, you know what I mean? Um, it would change a little bit of the profile a little, so it's a little bit more like it's supposed to be. It would help, I guess, with the biting properly. Um, it's just they have to break your jaw, you know. Um, they basically have to break it, and it's called a bone graft, mm -hmm. uh, which they do in other things, mm -hmm. you know, where they take the piece out and they mm -hmm. reshape. Uh, it's a little. Um, but I, you know, I've never had surgery. On, on anything but it was always something that was always the plan to be done and then it never happened and then years later when I thought it could happen on my own it never happened so now years later wow I have Medicaid I could take advantage of it you know um, yeah. so anyway yeah I called a couple places I would have to come in for a consultation first mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking about actually going to the hospital and having all these things done because when I went to some private places a lot of the doctors work at the hospitals anyway and those private places charge you a lot of money so it seemed somebody told me that their son had it done and they went to Stony Brook Hospital and it didn't cost them a dime I was like wow so anyway that was something I called about and okay. that was uh, you know uh, obviously just a little stressful in some ways um, but um, maybe a little anxiety a little but not too bad um and just to get a little bit of information um but again when you call for the information you kind of wind up saying well i just called three places but i still don't really have a lot of information um i'm just hesitant to kind of start open up a can of worms i'm, I'm a little hesitant because when i've been through it twice already um you know one at around 18 and then another one about 18 years after that you know um so yeah i'm just a little it's just frustrating when you try and do something or you try and help yourself when it comes to certain things there's always something to stop you yeah especially the way that the system is mm -hmm. you know well i don't think it would hurt you if you go for a consultation yeah they, they said it, it would be free i said really okay. yeah you know i'm thinking about it. it's just a matter of of course picking what's good yeah the nyu some of the doctors they're really affiliated there instead of just out here what's the uh new york Western. no the cornell wow, Cornell. yeah is that what it's called um 
Yeah, I know two of the doctors are affiliated uh, with that, and somebody I knew had one of those doctors do it. Okay. Uh, it's this guy, New Newgarden is his last name, and he's very like well-known, I think, for it. Um, but again, uh, I don't know if these doctors even accept Medicaid, because most high-end doctors won't. So that's the main thing that I'm worried about. Have to sign something? No. Oh, uh, no? Um, well, you can look up through your insurance if New Garden is listed as a provider. Yeah, well, that that's why I called them. I'm thinking, oh, well, I'll call them, and I asked them, can you tell me what doctors, blah, 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 and they were like, well, no, we basically can't unless you give us a hospital name. I go, well, pick like NYU, pick mm -hmm. this, I mean, any big hospital in my area, you know, um, and then that's when they wanted that code, and I was like, oh, yeah, I've heard of that. I go, but you guys should have that code, right, because you're the ones that would cover everything, and then they're like, no, well, they're like doctors would, they're the ones that process it. They're billing, right? Yeah, right. So then when I called, uh, it's usually called orthonathic surgery. Um, that's like the more proper name for it. So there's a ortho, orthonathic center at a lot of the hospitals. So one of the nurses answered. I asked her about it, you know, and I asked her for the code. And she's like, oh, no, we wouldn't have that here either. We don't have access to that. I was like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> yeah, you know, so, yeah. So is that it? Are we sort of, yeah. sort of? Okay, yeah. 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 So do you feel like you're focusing a little bit more on yourself? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, actually, yes. Um, okay. It still doesn't feel natural somehow. Okay. As stupid as that may sound, you know, it just doesn't... Sometimes it feels like either I'm focusing on the wrong things or it's not correct to be focusing on all these things. I should be focusing, let's say, on the baby. I should be focusing on more important things for myself, maybe. I should be focusing on seeing grandma. You know what I mean? Like all these things that I I guess I have trouble trying to balance, you know. Um, if you do a little bit of... A little bit of each. Yeah, and I'm not used to... Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Like I'm so... I always get like, oh, I'm just focusing. So sometimes my focus is there, but it's almost, well, I'm just focusing on one thing, and it's a little really tough. I actually didn't. No, I, I wanted to. I thought about I think it. you should try that because I feel like last time that you did that, then you started thinking more about, like, other things you could be doing for the brewery, and it kind of yeah. like your creativity a little bit. Yeah, exactly, right. Like, in some so ways... You, if you do at least maybe an hour or two a week. Yeah, yeah. You, like, get that sense, like, oh, well, this could lead to maybe this, and that could be interesting, or this is good practice yeah. for this. Yeah. And, yeah. I know, right. It's just... Exactly. It's the way that I've been dealing with a lot of things. I do something a little and then I drop it and then I go do something else and then I drop that or, or I don't really mean to drop it. I guess I get preoccupied. Do you feel like um, <clears throat> maybe when you do get up early in the morning? I have more time or it's quieter. Yeah. You that know? Be the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, very good actually. Yeah. To get your day going. Yeah, yeah, because I, I guess I'm used to, right, not doing anything, like, early, like, those projects. Mm -hmm. But then again, lately, I have been doing a lot of cleaning mm -hmm. and other things. And like I said, all of a sudden, it's 9 o'clock. I'm like, wow, I thought it was later than that. I got a decent amount done, and, yeah, uh, you know, early, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's just, it's so different. So let's, it's foreign so let's to stay me. focused on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, same time? Yes. Next week? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, absolutely. And, uh, uh, wait, this guy had scared. Yes. Okay. No, no, great. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, you know, I, maybe I noticed something in the past and just didn't want to say that. Yeah, but I mean, it's not until the end of the year. Oh, so. that, that's going to happen for you. And then I'll be out. Um, yeah. Oh, that's it, yeah. Yeah. I can't really afford to. Yeah. I mean, you don't know how the family and get to the help. Yeah. Right. I'll have yeah. some help yeah. for the that's good. Oh, great. Great. And I'll be back. That's great. Have you found out any, anything? Well, I, oh, yeah? yeah? That's yeah. awesome. Congrats. Do, do you have a boy yet? No, I don't oh, know. No. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Last. Yeah, I hear you. I know, right? Everything's going on. Uh, well, so yeah. Great. I know. Because I've been with my sister recently. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. All right. Take care. I'll see you next week. Take care of yourself.